اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ان شاء الله in the chapter tonight continuing in the analysis of the character of Imam Hassan عليه افضل الصلاه والسلام we stated earlier that he is the oppressed brother if we want to say, because so much we signify about Imam al Hussein alayhi afdal salati was salam, and we've forgotten his older brother, Imam al Hassan alayhi afdal salati was salam. And indeed, we can look at it from different angles. The first of which is analyzing the character of Imam al Hassan alayhi salam through the traditions through the ahadith, through the stories that come to us of his character, whether it be his morals, whether it be his knowledge, whether it be his worship, whether it be his wisdom. And we can try to understand who Imam al Hassan was in a greater depth. And the second lens we can look at Imam al Hassan with is a lens in which we can look at the greatness of Imam al Hassan through the Holy Quran. Now one may ask, how can we find Imam al Hassan within the Holy Qur'an? And something that we always overlook when we are reciting the Holy Qur'an or we mention these particular verses. But once we signify these verses, we begin to analyze that, yes, without a doubt, that Imam al Hassan is part and parcel of these verses. And it showcases to us, on the first level, the grand nature of the character of Imam al Hassan and elevating his rank to put him alongside all those that we constantly remember and constantly speak very highly of their bravery, their knowledge, their wisdom, their morality. And we're going to look at these few verses from the Holy Quran from the pool of verses that we can choose from. But these are the ones to signify because we are very much, we are very much familiar with these particular verses. But we may have overlooked the aspect of the pivotal role that Imam al-Hassan plays within them. The first of which is a story that a verse of the Holy Quran was revealed within it. That's a story narrated to us by Fatima al-Zahra alayhi afdal salati was salam in which she states that one day my father Rasulullah enters the house and he says to me, O oh, Fatima, I feel weak. Will you not get me al kisaul yamani and cover me with it? And the tradition goes on, as we all know, to state that Imam al Hassan would be entering, Imam al Hussein would be entering, Ali ibn Abi Talib would enter, and all of which would enter under the kisaul yamani. And likewise, Fatima al Zahra would enter afterwards. The tradition, to go, the tradition goes on to showcase to us that not only were these five under the Kisa ul Yamani, but also Jibra'il himself asks permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order for him to come and join them under the Kisa. But the significance here that we find that part and parcel of those that were under the Kisa was Imam al Hassan alayhi afdal salati was salam. And you'll find within this story to signify to us that these individuals that were chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were at the greatest heights. That Rasulullah in a tradition says that Um Salama says, Can I even enter under the Kisa as well? Or am I good enough? He says, to Um Salama, Um Salama, you are great, but these are of a different league. These are my Ahlul Bayt. And this is where the verse comes into question. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Jibra'il to tell Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaqri'uka salam wa yukhissuka bil tahiyyati wal ikram. That Allah has first and foremost sent his salutations upon you and your family. And he says to you this following verse, 
which we refer to as Ayatul Tathir, chapter 33 of the Holy Quran, ayah number 33. Jibra'il says towards Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, Allah says, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهِ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمْ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهِرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. The translation states that Allah wants to remove all impurities from you, O Ahlul Bayt, and purify you a thorough purification. So we'll find this is a verse from the Holy Quran signifying and at its center and core is none other than the person that we celebrate his birth on these nights which is Imam Al-Hasan Al-Mujtaba alayhi afdal salati was salam. Now where else can we find Imam Al-Hasan within the Holy Quran? We'll go no further than Ayatul Mubahala, found within the Holy Quran in chapter 3 of the Holy Quran, verse 61, where the story goes on to Turkey to us that there were a group of Christians that were debating with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And when they were debating, they did not come towards a conclusion. And so you'll find that what occurred was they came together and they said, let's come together and we'll make this aspect of mubahala, meaning we'll both raise our hands towards Allah and ask Allah to bring down his curse, shall we say, on those that are the liars, that the truth is not with. So that's when the verse in question says, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, فَقُلْ تَعَالُوا نَدْعُوا أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ He says, bring forth your sons, we'll bring forth our sons. Bring forth your women, we'll bring forth our woman and bring forth yourselves we will also bring forth ourselves and we'll pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whomever is the lies that his curses will be on so we'll find Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam part and parcel of this particular verse in the Holy Quran how so as we know from the traditions that Rasulullah, as his woman, plural, he only brings forth one woman that was enough to represent all the Muslim women at the time, in which was Fatima al Zahra, alayha afdal as salati wa salam. As his sons, Abna'ana wa Abna'akum, he brings forth Hassan and Hussein as his sons to represent the Muslims of the time. And as himself, he brings forth none other than Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, to represent himself. And you'll find the tradition goes on to say that these Christians, once seeing that Rasulullah brought forth his family to represent Islam, to represent the message, they said to Rasulullah, he says, Oh, Rasulullah, that it was suffice for us to see the light that was illuminating from the faces of these individuals that you have brought forth to scare us away from this mubahala. So you can imagine amongst these Ahlul Bayt, central to this particular verse in question is Imam Al-Hasan alayhi afdal as salati was salam. Likewise, he's mentioned in, in importance within the Holy Quran in chapter 3. Another one that we refer to, which is one that is very interesting, whereby it's known as Ayatul Mawadda. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, in chapter 42 of the Holy Quran, verse 23, it says, I do not ask any payment from you. All I ask is love to my new ones. إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَى That Rasulullah says to the people, I don't want anything from you as a payment for the message or what I've done for you, what I've established. All I want is love for my new ones. Now when 
these new ones are looked into and understood and translated, they are none other than the Ahlul Bayt. So Rasulullah says to the people that I entrust these people to you, that you may show them love as a payment for all that I have brought forth in the message of Islam. But the question remains that after Rasulullah leaves this world, how much love did they actually show the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam? We will find that the first to go towards Rasulullah would be Fatima to Zahra in the manner that she was treated after Rasulullah. There was no love shown there. We find Amir al Mu'mineen in the nights that we're going to remember in Ramadan was struck whilst prostrating towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, no love was shown there. And then we'll find Imam al Hassan alayhi afdal salati wa salam. Rasulullah would say, Mawaddata fil qurba, that show love to my new ones. Imam al Hassan, he would be poisoned. And Imam al Hussein, as we all know, the tragedy of Karbala. How much did they show love towards the family of Rasulullah? The new ones that Rasulullah says, that is my true payment for what I have brought forth. So we begin to understand when analyzing the life and the characteristics that is showcased to us about Imam al Hassan through the Holy Quran, we analyze that Imam al Hassan was looked at by Rasulullah to be or his love towards him to be a payment for Rasulullah's message. That we find within the Holy Quran, we understand and comprehend that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showcases to us that amongst the people under the Kisa, Imam al Hassan was one of those that Allah has removed all impurities and purified a thorough purification. And that Imam al Hassan, alongside Imam al Hussein, was a representative for all sons for the religion of Islam. And that's why we'll find when the tradition comes from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he says, Al Hassan wa Al Hussein, Sayyida, Shabab, Ahlil Jannah. That Hassan and Hussein are the masters of the youth of paradise. So let's take this into perspective when analyzing the life of Imam al Hassan alayhi afdal salati wa salam and what the Quran showcases to us to be his characteristics. Insha'Allah, we can learn from these verses to better understand the character of Imam al-Hasan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.